Come on. <laughs> Come on. Um, I'd like to call to order the planning board meeting for Thursday, November 11th. If everybody could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> I am hoping that we have planning board members that are somewhere in cyberspace. Otherwise, we're going to have a big problem here. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we do. <laughs> I see, okay, I see Paul, I see Jerry, I see Amber. So um, on Zoom, we have Paul Amatucci, we have Jerry Graybill, we have Amber Fecto, and on site, we have Mike LaRue, we have Jennifer McCabe, our code enforcement officer, we have Lee J. Feldman. Our interim town planner, does that sound right? Sure. Um, he's also the planning director for Southern Maine Planning and Development Company or Corporation, whatever it is. And we have James Bellissimo, who is our um, town manager. Before I open the first public comment session, I would like to thank the folks in Berwick for coming out to vote. Um, we had a really great turnout and our land use ordinances were passed, which shows me that we did a good job explaining to the town exactly the, uh, what we were trying to do and why we were trying to do it, and the people in the town understood that. So that's good, good job. Um, so I'm going to open the first public comment session. Public comment is open to property owners and residents of the town of Berwick for anything under the purview of the Berwick Planning Board, that is not an active agenda or application. Anybody? Seeing nobody come up, I'm going to close the public comment session and move on to the approval of minutes from the October 21st, 2021 meeting. Has everybody had a chance to review the minutes? Yeah, I found something. Um, uh, the regular member absent, um, I was there. Um, it says that I wasn't, um, Allison was the one that was absent. Oops. Okay. <laughs> Other than that, everything else seemed good. Amber, did you find anything uh, with the minutes that Jen missed? <laughs> no, I don't see anything other than that. Okay, great. Paul? No, it looked fine to me. Great, and Jerry? No, I'm good. Awesome. So with that being said, I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I'm, I move. I'll, make, okay. I'll make that motion to approve the minutes as amended. Okay. I have a motion from Paul. I need a second. I'll second. All right. Seconded by Mike LaRue. All in favor? Aye. All right. That looks like 5-0. The minutes have passed. Thank you very much. Moving on to old business, uh, the first item on our agenda for old business is the final plan meeting for the major subdivision, which is the seven multifamily unit ex in the existing building at 170 Pine Hill Road, which is in the R1 and R2 zone, um, and it's Jerry Latart's property. James? So uh, tonight, this project is up for final approval. I'll just go over a summary of where we're at today. Jerry Latard has requested a seven unit multifamily dwelling at 170 Pine Hill Road, each with three bedrooms. It was an existing building. And this building was constructed uh, years ago and the use had lapsed and that's why he's back for approval. The building is currently condemned at the time of application and there are severe mold issues identified in the mold study by Absolute Resource Associated which has been remediated in the mold areas identified. A structural analysis was completed by JSN Associates, which identified several issues with the building, but they did deem it salvageable. And there's a report that has many recommendations that's in the, in the file. And we had uh, civil consultants take a look at the building height and the average height, which is the, um, our ordinance requirements is less than the maximum allowable. A public hearing was held 
on October 21st, and we had no butters to speak. Um, I can go over some of the findings of fact. Um, so 11.1 with pollution, prior mold issues were remediated, and um, there's a condition of approval. Um, number three, and if, if deemed necessary during um, the routine inspections, a second mold evaluation should be completed by a third party, shall be required if any other areas are um, suspected of mold, and that's at the applicant's uh, expense. Um, the other, most of these findings are pretty standard. Uh, Berwick Water will serve the, the property. There is a stormwater and erosion co control plan that has been submitted. Um, no adverse traffic impacts. Um, I'll just make a note that a dumpster will be enclosed and screened. Very important. We don't, have to do, we don't want to deal with ongoing non-screened dumpsters. Mm -hmm. Um, conditions have been established, conditions one and two for the technical um, capacity to ensure that Jerry has the resources he needs. A architect or engineer shall inspect the building construction on a weekly basis. That's also put on the plan and the site work on a bi-weekly bi basis. Um, last part, um, the building will be sprinkled and that will be inspected by the state fire marshal. That's, I believe that's all I have for tonight. Okay, so um, we've gone through this and Mr. Latart and company have been great about accommodating every, every single thing that we have asked of them, um, they've, they've agreed to. So what we will need to do is approve the findings of fact and then the conditions of approval and then the final plan. Is that my, yes? Yep. All right, so um, does anybody from the board have any questions or concerns or comments on this? Okay, I see nobody come forward. Um, I'm going to be looking for a motion to approve the findings of fact on this. I move that we approve the findings of fact. Okay, moved by Mike LaRue. Can I have a second? I'll second. All right, seconded by Jerry. Any further discussion on the findings of fact that James just went over? Okay, seeing none, um, I will take a vote. All in favor? Okay, so that's 5-0 to approve the findings of fact. And then um, James went over the three conditions of approval, so I'm going to need a motion to approve the conditions of approval. I move to accept the conditions of approval. All right, moved by Mike LaRue, and I'm looking for a second. I'll second. All right, seconded by Paul Amatucci. Um, any further discussion on the conditions? Okay, seeing no uh, further discussion, I will take a vote on approving the conditions. All in favor? All right, and that's 5-0 on the conditions, so finally, um, I just need somebody, a motion to approve the project. Because I'll make a motion to approve the project. All right, so moved by Paul. And I need a second on that. I will second. Seconded by Jerry. All in favor of approving the final plan. <laughs> and that is approved 5-0. Thank you, Mr. Latart. Thank you. Mike LaRue, do you prefer Mike or Michael in the minutes? Either or. What do you prefer? I go by both. Okay. So. Moving on to the next order of business in old business, we are going to see the sketch plan for the major subdivision at 259 School Street. This is in the R2 zone. SOW Solar is the applicant. Who do we have here for the applicant today? Michael's online. Okay. I'm here, Madam Chair. Oh, hi, Michael. How are you today? Good. How are you? Great. Um, so we see that you have submitted a cluster. Or just uh, would you like to go over what you guys have done? Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, share my screen to facilitate a few. That would be wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. 
see you, alright? What's up? Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, for the record, Michael Sudak, Atar Engineering, here on behalf of uh, NH Solar Guard and SRW Solar Incorporated. Um, so, uh, for the residential side of this development, um, we presented, I believe, the middle of last month, a conventional subdivision um, proposing 11 lots on this 22-acre uh, subdivided parcel um, of the overall 66 and a half acres um, on the corner of School Street Heritage Drive. So uh, the board tasked uh, us with coming back and proposing a cluster subdivision. Uh, this is my uh, first blush attempt um, trying to um, pay consideration to some of the areas that the board highlighted and that Lee J highlighted at the last meeting. So what we've got is the same 11 lots. Uh, we're preserving the vast majority of the uh, critical terrestrial habitat here in the north of the significant vernal pool. Um, the vast majority of the existing field and farmland uh, up front along School Street, about 175 feet of it. Um, to the rear yard property line and then through deed restrictions and just building envelopes on viable uplands, probably another 100 or so feet um, will be preserved. And then to the west, the entire uh, Malloy Brook stream bed and a considerable portion of the, the surrounding area as well, um, all to be put in open space, I believe, right around 59% um, open space proposed. So. Um, I believe that this uh, is the, the best iteration that um, matches the intent um, of what was requested. And um, I know um, an overall plan was also requested by the board and by Lije, but I can move into that um, after we have any discussion here. I'd be happy to take questions. Lije? Oh, you're looking at me. I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, get your microphone, please. <laughs> All right, I'll get Thank my microphone. You. <laughs> You're very welcome. Um, uh, Michael, was any consideration given to um, moving the internal road down Heritage Drive closer towards School Street and trying to cluster most of the lots internally? I mean, you've got one, two, three, four six lots that are going to take curb cuts off from heritage mm -hmm. and it seems like you know I, I i'm still not convinced that you couldn't do something with a cul-de-sac that allows you to take most of the lots internally yeah so i i um, i went back and forth a couple different times on having that road move kind of parallel down the page, if you will, the, the hammerhead. So having that come further south and then having lots on either side. But really the, the issue I wound up with was um, the area I'd be developing in that um, hypothetical would be in, would be either incurring a greater amount of wetland impacts um, just from having to get the road back to where I'd need to drop uh, a lollipop. Um, mm -hmm. And also, um, all of the lots would be in the area that the board specifically highlighted they would like to be preserving. You know, if, if the cul-de-sac was any further south and I would then pursue to have frontage lots coming off of that, I'd be using all of the area that, you know, I, I believe Madam Chair um, brought up at the last meeting. This People have been looking at this as a field and a farmland for hundreds of years. Um, and we, we, I thought this was a more reasonable alternative to preserving as much of that as possible as opposed to endeavoring to have a cul-de-sac and, and fit as many lots off of that as possible. I do understand um, the frontage lots and the, the component of this development that that proposes, but the, the majority of those would be um, I think one, two, three, all, all four of these would be back in the tree line. Um, and I, I know I've mentioned with you, I believe I mentioned at the last meeting, we'd be endeavoring to have deed restrictions 
in these rear yards um, to keep this critical terrestrial habitat. I, I um, candidly, I took a lot of cracks in this one, and I feel like this is um, the best combination of being respectful to the the boys' wishes while also making the most sense of the the upland that I could utilize. Um, Michael, can I ask, is lot five and lot six um, going to be getting their access from the, from heritage or from the internal road? The intense heritage. Um, okay. I, so th there's adequate, there's adequate frontage for both. Um, but, you know, you, you kind of have a, uh, either a, a hot dog or a hamburger lot, if you will. I know right. that's very um, kind of crass language, but yeah, the, the potential is there for both. Um, right. I just see that you're requesting a, a waiver so that you can have all of those driveways off heritage. Um, I think I would prefer to see as much coming off of that internal road as possible. Sure. I don't know I don't know what the rest of the board is thinking or Lee J, but I, I absolutely open it up to you guys to talk about. That's just something that I'm thinking is um, that. Lee J? Oh. What do you think? You know, there's a clip on that. You can put it right yeah, on Yeah, I know, but I'm sharing it, so I want to make <laughs> sure it's available so Jen doesn't grab me by the collar. And call me <laughs> well, over. Uh, <laughs> Well, well, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I mean, I think I'd uh, you know I think the planning board itself needs to really weigh in here, but yeah. um, I'm, I'm I'm still not convinced. I mean, I think that that n uh, a shift in the roads access on Heritage and bringing a cul-de-sac in, um, but but beyond that, I think what we you know in order to achieve what I think the board is trying to achieve with clustering would be to um, look at um, shrinking the lot sizes to, um, I want to say the minimum lot size, the, you know, 20, 25,000 square feet. Some of the lots are 30,000 square feet, which is, you know, pretty small in, in, you know, as it relates to septic systems. But I think, um, there's ways to shrink the lot sizes and maximize that. And certainly I hear what Michael's saying about, the um, you know respecting the, the the wetlands and everything, and I think there's still a way to do that, and that would be deed restricting um, how much land um, in those lots that might be in the forested areas to how much you know how much tree cutting could actually occur on any one of those lots to preserve most of the the lots. I mean, I'm I'm working in other communities where they're now even signing um, no cut zones on lots so that people realize that over that, here too yeah. yeah and so i mean i i realize this is a second second shot maybe a third shot at it and, but i you know maybe maybe i could work with michael internally um off 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 the meeting grid if you will and try to come up with something um a little more um and, and i understand we michael and i talked about this he sent it to me before you folks got it and certainly, you know, they're trying to sell some lots with frontage on heritage so they can generate cash to be able to build the internal road. Um, but I just think that that's an awful lot of lots fronting on, on heritage. Along a lot with of curb a road. cuts. Yes. Yeah, so you've got nine, you've essentially got nine curb cuts. Yeah. So um, yeah. my thought, you know, depending on where the, the board wants to take this, that I, I still think um, something different could occur yeah i'd love to hear from the board mike do you have any yeah no i agree with that with both of them I, I think that having more curb cuts on the new road would be nicer than having it on heritage um smaller lot sizes and maybe making it i agree with them yeah i think you did a, I, I think it's a good job um I just we we we're doing this with a few developments right now. Um, the one the Moral Farm one and that one was pretty significantly um, different. This one looks a lot the same, but I can see there's a lot of wetlands and whatnot. Um, Paul, do you have any uh, comments or questions on this? No, uh, actually, you you preempted it by talking about the curb cuts. 
Okay. Because uh, it just looks like there are way too many that are going direct onto Heritage for me. Uh, uh, if there's a way to you know, design this uh, to have those cuts on the interior road, I think that would be the way to go. Here. Yeah, I agree. Jerry? Hmm? Uh, just looking at what you're saying, you know, everybody, I think, has done you know what was asked, but agreeing with everyone with the curb cuts, could lots four, what is it here, four and five be turned so that they face into the new road the same way as six and seven, so they would not be going towards heritage? Then you would lose you know, four curb cuts on heritage. So can I ask a question? Of course you can. Can Into I ask the a microphone. couple? Yeah, go okay. for it. Here's my question. Okay, and this this is going to be a question for because Heritage Drive is already a subdivision. Yeah. So, how do I want to ask this appropriately? Ready for this, CJ? Sorry. Oh, me. Make sure you're talking into the mic so that we get it. Sure. Okay. So my question is, the way these lots are laid out, okay, if we leave them like this, so it's this this is going to look like it's part of Heritage Subdivision. I agree. How close? Are these houses, what what are the um, houses going to look like, I guess is my question. How close are they? Because you drive up Heritage Drive, those houses are beautiful. Mm -hmm. They're well-maintained. Like, they do a really nice job up there. Yeah. So on the other side of the road, I guess I would have to know what they're trying to accomplish to see, like, you can't, you can't drive up one side of the road. It has to match the characteristics of the neighborhood, right? So you can't drive up one side of the road and have all these lots that don't match the other side of the road. So just keep that in mind because that's in our land use. Yeah. That's I, I, I agree. If, if I may, Madam Chair. Yes, please. Uh, I'm happy you brought that up. That, uh, honestly, that is what our first blush uh, intent was to, and that, that's why a conventional subdivision was originally proposed. These lots across the street on Heritage are conventional lots. They're considerably larger than what's proposed here. And the original sketch application was in an attempt to have the frontage lots here be in the spirit of replicating what was across the street to try, try and, you know, not kind of get that, like, head cock um, from people that are coming up, looking at one side, seeing something, looking at the other and seeing something completely different. So. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up because that kind of um, brings me back to what I originally thought was the best use for um, this piece of land. But if I can also circle back to Jerry's comments, so I'm going to zoom in here for a second, uh, if I can. There we go. Okay. So all of these lots, uh, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight are all 100 by 300. Um, that's your max length to width ratio by ordinance standard. So effectively three of them stack together 300 by 300 block. So if I could rotate all three of these, three, four, and five, 90 degrees to then have, if you can see my cursor, a 100 by 300 Don't need to rotate with three different curve cuts coming off of right here. Uh, this proposed road on either side, you know, we would still have two front edge lots up here for one and two, but then the remaining three through 11 would then be off of this proposed road. You're occupying the exact same space. And you're just rotating the lots 90 degrees. Madam Chair? Um, oh, I, I, are you set for now, Mike? Yeah, I, I'm. So, uh, so I tend, have, you know, I tend to ahead. tend to agree with you, Michael, on, on, um, if you look at the concept of the original layout, um, that works better. But um, what I would suggest is, you know, you could do a couple of things. Yes, you could move lot three off from being a linear, uh, uh, a deep lot off from Heritage and bring it up along the um, cul-de-sac road um, behind lot four, if you will. And I think, again, these lots on this original layout um, are, you know, an acre, acre and a half rather than 30,000 square feet. I think if you shrink the size of the lots using the basic concept that you have from the original design, you're going to have a lot of open space. And that even, that even goes for lots 6, 7, and 8 along School Street. 
I'd pull the lots right away from School Street and use that as open space and have smaller lots. And lot five and lot four, seven and eight are going to take their access off from um, the internal road. And then nine, 10, and 11, you, again, you can shrink the lot size so that the lots themselves aren't encumbering Malloy Brook. And, you know, that's going to achieve a lot more than, than the second concept that you have. I also think, I mean, the, the cluster concept, um, if you look at across the street on Heritage Drive, there's four houses there. On, so the cluster, you have eight houses in the same amount of space, essentially. And it looks like you're just trying to jam as many houses in there as possible. Um, which is not the spirit of clustering. I mean, I like, I like Lee Jay, I like your idea, shrinking those down, taking more um, access from the internal road, not having nine curb cuts on heritage, um, or maybe get rid of a couple lots on the cluster. I mean, I understand you want to get as <coughs> many, you do want to get as many houses in there, but if we are trying to mimic the feel of of heritage, you know, you've got, you, you can't have eight houses facing four houses. It will look ridiculous. Yeah. Um, Madam Chair, I'm sorry, I can't see through the video. Who, who's that that's been speaking just now? Me, Madam Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, the mask. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought it was someone else. Okay, okay. no, no, no. It's, I think it's me and Jenny. Go, we're going back and forth between me and Jen. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Um, um, that's just, you know, my thinking. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I don't want to challenge that thought process. I, I guess I'm just looking. I'm, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of conflicting information here. So in, in my mind, the, the purpose of clustering would be to preserve a greater degree, by virtue of uh, additional open space, preserving areas that should be preserved. In, in the case of this lot, we have the Malloy Brook stream channel, we have the critical terrestrial habitat, we have as much of the existing farmland as possible. Yes. Um, I, I mean, cl clustering, I, I would contend, kind of is jamming lots in a specific area, maybe just an area that is most suitable and preserves other areas that should be preserved. Like, uh, I'm, I'm hearing one thing that... Uh, yeah, I, I understand that. I'm just looking, looking at it from a, <clears throat> um, on a, you know, on a piece of paper, that's what it looks like. And it has to, yeah, and it, it does have um, to fit in with the rest of the neighborhood. So if you want all of the curb cuts to be on heritage, it has to look like heritage, and that's yes. you know uh, that is what it is. I, I hear the comment loud and clear okay. about the, the number of curb cuts along heritage. That that's understood, but I feel, I would contend that even if the the hypothetical I brought up before, it mm -hmm. if lots three, four, and five, and then six, seven, eight are just rotated ninety degrees, so you have two frontage lots mm -hmm. and then nine clustered lots off this road, mm -hmm. yeah. you're still going to have lots jammed together adjacent to Heritage Drive with very little buffering because well, if, if you turn those three 90 degrees, well, if well, the three and the three, if you turn them 90 degrees, you'd only have one lot on Heritage Road on one side of the road and in one lot on the other. You'd have all the curb cuts, and like you said, it would just be on yeah, the Yeah, you're not going to see it driving down Heritage. That's, right. That's it. You're I not going to... You might see a couple <laughs> houses, right. but it, it's not going to be right there. Right. Uh, okay. You, you would still see... Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and probably five. If five is here along the road, you wouldn't see. You'd see two less houses. You'd still see six of them stacked together right here. Well, I think they just uh, said um, turn. If you turned six and seven. Yes. Well, that's all. That's all field right now. I mean. Right. right. Well, so, but but again, well, we haven't gotten into buffers yet. So. Yeah, I mean, Michael, I think that. I think that if you, you know, it's one thing to lay the lots out, and, and I've been doing a quick look here at the original subdivision. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you take lots one, two, and three, keep them laid out the way they are, but cut them in half so that all of the wetland and the terrestrial buffer area is 
are pretty close to it is preserved <coughs> because it's not part of a lot that anybody can go in and cut or do anything to. And then if you take, you know, you put a curb opening on the internal roadway on lot four and on lot five, and then, you know, lot eight, um, you shrink the size of that lot by cutting off the portion that fronts on School Street so that that's open space there. And you can shrink lots 9, 10, and 11 in half and pull them away from Malloy Brook so you're preserving that, that area as well. I think that does a really nice job. And then I think we need to really talk about um, where you place the homes. Like on lot 4, um, you know, you put the, the building envelope area and require it to be on the internal side of the of the, the lot yes. so that it's not down near heritage. And lot five, you can require that they put the lot the house on the inside of that wetland area. There's a big enough envelope on the back side of lot five so that they're not seen or not directly up on the heritage area. I mean I think there's some real design considerations <coughs> with the first design that you provided that can actually work pretty well if we just think outside the box a little bit. And okay. this is Jen talking now, Mike, just to let you know. Thank you. Um, Thank yeah, you. I think that Lee Jay's on to something, and I think he's correct. I think for you to have this subdivision, um, and I'm not the board, so just to let you know, I'm just the code enforcement officer, but um, I think you need to separate them from subdivision to subdivision because if you keep this new plan, it looks like it's all one subdivision. But if you could see Lee J's piece of paper because he's drawn it out with blue pen, I know you can't see it, um, it makes a lot of sense. And it would definitely put like a buffer in between them. So then you're not so, you know, it's not so similar at that point. What, what is the them that in the operative that you're describing? The houses, sorry. But, so you're talking about the heritage development and, and my proposed development? Yeah, so if you could see okay. Lee Jay's design, you would understand what we mean a little bit more. Um, yeah. But if you take the original design and you do what Lee Jay's telling you to do, what it does is it, push the it pushes suggested. all the houses. Suggested. <laughs> sorry. Um, it pushes the houses way back from Heritage, so it doesn't look like it's all one subdivision. If you're driving up Heritage right now and these houses were there, it would look like all one subdivision. That's just my take on it. It would, but it would look like what happened. What happened? Yeah. yeah. Amber, okay. Amber, do you have any um, ideas, questions, concerns, or comments? I don't have any ideas. Sure. Um, I'm just trying to figure out where the compromise is. Yeah. Um, it's a tough one. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like I'm going to have to bring you on to payroll, EJ. <laughs> uh, I'd prefer not, but I think I can work with you on this. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just want to, I, I appreciate all the conversation, everyone. Um, I just want to have kind of one line in the sand drawn, if, if I may. So what I'm gathering is that the board would like cluster, a cluster development moving forward, but they would like for a distinction to be made um, through separation and distance, through the orientation of more lots off of the proposed road, through buffering if we need to get there. And I think we're going to have to get there to, to truly capture what everyone's describing, um, to separate this development can I see this and its intent from the existing heritage drive development and, and how that looks. I think you, yes, Michael. I think that's. Okay. Um, I think that you have Fair that. Um, and it sounds like Lee J is willing to, um, you know, meet uh, with you, work with you. He's got a whole drawing in front of him already. He I'll, loves. Uh, he loves this stuff. I'll do. I'll do a. I'll do a hand hand markup of of the plan back in my office, Michael, and get something to you. Probably eight and a half by eleven or whatever. I can't scan sure. plan size, but um, just I'm so used, you can I'm see. Used yeah, <laughs> just so you can see um, what what I'm thinking about, and you can take it from there and and fix it up a little bit. Is everybody on the board okay with that? Yes. Yes. Actually. Okay. It looks like everybody yes. is. So it I'm sounds like we are going to send you back to yeah. sketch and. See you when we see you.
Um, is there another issue with, uh, this is part of a major subdivision, right? Oh, yes. And uh, DEP, uh, is that? Well, Michael, can you, can you tell us how the solar project, which abuts this and was part of the mother parcel, um, fits into this whole scheme um, relevant to the local approval as well as any DEP permitting that may be required? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you, you brought it up. I, I have um, Andrew Keller of NA Solar Garden here with me, who's um, been my my go with for the other half of what we're doing with this parcel. And um, I know it's the same layout, but I'm going to switch screens real quick um, and maybe zoom in a little bit. So we've rotated 90 degrees, but um, yeah, to answer your question first. So our access off Heritage Drive um, however many curb cuts we end up having, we're going to need to have at least one, um, will require the amendment of the DEP permit um, that's associated with this development. And we've had some back and forth with um, the state and with uh, the town's attorney on the vehicle that we need to drive to get to that point. Um, I can't remember if correspondence for that went to the board. I know James is in possession of it. Um, so granting or uh, allowing us to modify that will be by virtue of um, an entrance permit for whatever development we end up having. and. Um, if there are any subsequent frontage lots, then that would have to be something we discuss, but they would be roped in as well. And we would have to, you know, um, engineer some, some driveway culverts, some crossings of those, um, curb cuts just to ensure that the, the vegetated swale that goes down to the detention pond that's here on the corner of school street is, is maintained in the spirit of the permit, um, for that whole development, um, that was turned over to the town, or at least the road was turned over to the town. Um, and extrapolating from there, so whatever whatever configuration we have for the residential side, be it the cul-de-sac, wherever it ends up being, we're going to have um, our gravel access drive come off of that and then enter into the back portion of the parcel, the 44 and a half acres. Um, that's left, and this is where our solar development is going to take place. Um, and we've uh, we had sketch for that, I believe, way back in April. Um, we submitted uh, site review for that, I believe, in September. Um, so I know the request was made um, at the last meeting on the residential side, just to see how the two are married. So uh, here you go, um, but. Yeah, um, I'd, uh, I guess that, that puts a bow on what I have to say. Um, I'd be interested if there are any questions on that half. Lee Jay, anything? Well, I guess my question still is, Michael, <coughs> that, that, that where this was all, I'm assuming, one parcel at one point and the solar property was split off, while it's not a lot it's the first dividing, so it's not a lot in the subdivision, um, but still needs to be considered as part of the review. But I'm wondering if DEP is going to want to take into consideration the residential portion of this development as part of the as part of the overall approval process. Are you like common scheme and development here? Yes. Yeah. So I've. Um I had an initial pre-application meeting for this development uh, in its sketch iteration from back that the town saw in April. Um, so the residential component wasn't a part then. Um, we didn't know about the vernal pool. We didn't know about anything. So we, we've re-envisioned the, the solar development side uh, a couple times now. I've kept up with DEP on how things have changed and um, they're different watersheds. Actually, the um, the vernal pool um, serves as a pretty good um, watershed divide where 
the entire solar development will come down into the Malloy Brook channel and the entire residential side, you can tell from the, the wetlands here and how they come through the site from, from left to right. There's two culvert crossings of School Street here. Those will be our analysis points for the stormwater analysis on the residential side. Um, so in my mind, they're, they're separate analysis um, or they, they warrant separate stormwater analyses because they're separate watersheds separate analysis points. Um, I can understand the common scheme of development component of it, but um, I, I guess I, I um, would question whether or not the two should be grouped together just because of where the, the, the subcatchment divides take place on, on the parcel. Okay. Well, I'm just asking it. I'm going to let you yeah. run with the DEP on the permitting aspect. Okay. Anybody else have any questions or comments on this one? All right. Thank you, Michael. Welcome. We'll see you back here soon. And we will move forward. Yeah, Lee J, um, feel free to reach out to me at, at your leisure. Yes, no, I, I will be in touch. Um, it won't probably won't be tomorrow, but I will be in touch in the next couple of days with you. Absolutely. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. And Thanks, Mike. Good night. The next item on our agenda under old business is the preliminary plan for the major subdivision, which is phase, phase four of Heritage Drive. Um, we had a site walk. I wish I could tell you what day it was, but I don't have it right in front of me. Some Saturday. It was Saturday a Saturday morning. site walk. Yep. Um, Mike LaRue was there. I was there. Mike Wright was there from Great Works Regional Land Trust. Tom Wright was there, our chair of the Board of Selectmen. We had a bunch of abutters there. We had uh, Lou Chamberlain from Atar. We had Mr. Clement there, who is the property owner. Um, we walked about 500 feet up the road. We learned that this project um, has, is a 20 plus year in the making project, very near and dear to the heart of um, the property owner. And uh, we got a good layout of what they want to do. Who's in charge of this one, James? I, can, I got a couple more. This is actually <laughs> coincidentally the I don't know who's a butter to the project that was just um, presented. Yes, coincidentally. This is phase four, as mentioned, it's a long time in the making. Uh, phase four <coughs> is proposed to be 18 lots in within phase four, there's phasing within phase four. So what's proposed is to, uh, the first phase to do six of the 18 lots. So this phase connects Heritage and Elmwood, so it connects from School Street through to C Cranberry Meadow. Um, I think Steve and I were talking um, that um, he's got some environmental permits that are that should be in at any time. Yeah, come up, come on up. Um, but we just wanted to get this on the books so we can move this forward. So you want to know where we stand with DEP? Yeah, sure. Okay, they had some just small concerns on some language. I think some of the stuff on numbers, they had 17 lots, not 18. Um, their concerns were phase three, uh, uh, well location. When we do the plumes on the septics and where that was, that was taken care of. Uh, they came back to the uh, turtle and Snake habitat, which was answered by MDI FW. Um, it's, it's just small things. There's like six items on the list that we just got this week. So that all went back yesterday to DP. So um, we, we sh we're hoping to have that done shortly. Um, so hopefully we hear from them in a, a week or so and we should be good. Great. So with tonight being preliminary approval, and I guess I'll put Lee on the spot. <laughs> With, with preliminary approval for those environments, should, should the board wait for those to come back to approve for preliminary approval, or can they condition it on based on the environmentals? Yeah, I mean, preliminary approval is only preliminary. Um, he, they can approve preliminary um, review with the condition that the DEP permits be submitted as part of the final application. Um, that's not a problem at all. Which is typical anyway, right? Yes. Yeah. 
So the application could be found complete tonight, and if found complete, my suggestion would be a public hearing for the 18th. Okay. Um, Paul, do you have any uh, questions, comments, or concerns regarding this one and the preliminary plan approval? You're on mute. Oh, there you are. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not muted. <laughs> no concerns? No, I have no. Okay. Jerry? Not at this time. No. No, I have no comments. Amber? No, not at this time. Mr. LaRue? No, I'm good at this time. All right. I don't either. Um, the site walk was very informative, very thorough. This is, I mean, this has been through Army Corps of Engineers. It's, there's so much work that has been done with this. Um, so I would uh, look for a motion to approve the preliminary plan. I mean, do I, hold on. Let me retract my uh, asking for a motion. Do I have to put as a condition on the preliminary that the DEP is submitted as part of the final approval? I thought that was part of final approval anyway. Well, it is, but I mean, it certainly just covers you. Okay. I mean, so that it's a spoken word and everybody okay. knows it. I'm looking for a motion to approve the preliminary plan with a condition that the DEP paper permit. Purpose, huh? permit. permit is submitted as part of the final approval. I'll make that motion. So made. I'm looking for a second. No second. All right. Seconded by Jerry. All in favor? And that's 5-0. So uh, preliminary plan approval. Thank you, Mr. Clement. We will schedule the public hearing for the 18th. 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 See you then. Thank you. Yep. Moving on to new business. Um, site plan expansion, 565 Portland Street. This is in the RCI zone, and it is root for self-storage. Is this Lee J? This yes. is me. I feel like I'm playing tennis. <laughs> this is kind of like the <laughs> first project that finally just All know, right. completely thrown to me. Um, so uh, the applicant is proposing to construct... I put two new storage buildings intended for recre and intending for recreational vehicles, camper trailer storage, along with areas for outdoor vehicle storage, associated access ways, and stormwater management facilities. The previous phase approved in 2020 consisted of nine self-storage buildings. All storage buildings were pre-engineered metal structures. The new buildings will have footprints of 7,150 square feet and 5,200 square feet. Uh, the facility will continue to be remotely managed. No office is proposed on site. In the area of the proposed vehicular and RV storage, renters will coordinate with remote staff to accommodate drop off and pickup stored vehicles um, as needed by appointment. The self storage facility will be accessible 24 hours a day, seven days a week through the use of access codes at the security gate. The existing security gate will remain and the chain link fence will be relocated and extended as shown on the plan. The vehicular storage will be accessible by appointment only. Access to the self-storage site will be via an existing driveway. Access to the vehicular storage will be obtained via Coffin Lane. The 9.9 .9 acre lot has 1.7 acres of wetland and the north and east lot line portion of the lot as well as running between the existing development and the proposed site. The dimensional requirements have been met um, with the development as shown on the plans. The configuration of the proposed development has been designed to avoid major impacts with wetlands. Uh, DEP Site Location and Development Act permit was issued for the 2020 expansion um, and major amendment approval will be required to be issued by the DEP on this application. Project will require both treatment of the stormwater um, from the site and control flows from the downstream wetlands and waterways. Um, that has also been submitted to the main DEP. Um, I'm going to skip ahead here so I'm not going through this whole thing. The applicant um, is seeking a waiver um, of the landscaping requirement for the application, which can be found in Article 9, Section 9.8.F.2.B.6. 
We need to change that. There's <laughs> 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 so much fun oh to listen my to. God. <laughs> um, oh, the six is a VI, not a number six. <laughs> VI, well, I called it six. <laughs> Landscaping plan showing location, type, and approximate size of planting and location dimensions of all fencing and screening is what they're seeking the waiver of. According to the applicant, the following is justification of the waiver, which they've put in um, to their request. It is requested that the requirement of submitting a landscaping plan be waived. The site is located 10 feet lower than the adjacent roadway, Portland Street, and is currently developed in the area that is visible from the roadway. A portion of the development on the north side of the lot will be screened by natural vegetation on all sides with none of the development visible from the roadway. Landscaping would have minimal aesthetic value in this location. The proposed location of the fencing is indicated on sheet L1. Um, waiving the requirement would not adversely affect abutting landowners or the general health, safety, welfare of the town and would not nullify the intent of the purpose of the official zoning map, any ordinances, or the comprehensive plan. Um, the applicant is also seeking a waiver of the plan scale requirement due to the size and location, size of the location, um, which the board is dealing with. In this situation, the scale of the plan being greater than um, one inch equals 40 feet is inconsequential to the application. Uh, completeness, the application is complete. However, prior to finding the application complete, the board should decide if they want to waive the landscaping requirement as requested above. If the, wa if the waivers are granted, the board could determine the application complete. If no waiver is granted, then you will need to wait for the applicant to submit the required materials. Recommendation would be to grant the waivers, find the application complete, and determine if a site walk is required and set the date for the public hearing. Any conditions of approval will be proposed once the site walk and public hearings have occurred. That's a mouthful. Whew. Who do we have? Is that why Neil was here? Yep. Yep. I was here, but it sounds like Lee is taking my whole job. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not coming to work for you either, Neil. <laughs> they need it. I'm on the computer right now, Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Raposa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't know if you want me to just go over, have a brief overview of the development. That'd be great. Uh, yeah. John Lijay's uh, presentation there. Uh, my name is Neil Raposa with Civil Consultants here on behalf of Route 4 Self Storage. Uh, we came through um, last year with the expansion of uh, that existing self storage area that was on Route 4. I'll jump up to that plan just so we have the reference. Um, so this was the previous uh, previous development that was approved last year, and as Lee J described, uh, went through the full site location application and uh, approval process at the state. Um, there were some some tweaks to the existing boundary lines that we had to make to. Uh, bring that existing storage area into conformance. Uh, so that was done with that prior, uh, with that prior application. Um, we have now uh, combined this, the front lot here where this uh, uh, initial development was uh, with, the, uh, with the rear lot that gets all the way back into, uh, into the area of the brook back here. Uh, and that allows us to uh, come back and utilize this this back area and uh, access this portion of the lot via uh, an access easement off of Coffin off of Coffin Lane. I'm not sure if you if you recall a while back it was brought up whether or not we could create a separate lot out here for development, and it was determined that there would be it was just too complex out here trying to bring this uh, now uh, abandoned town road now it's a private road uh, into conformance to create frontage. However, since we're combining these two lots now, uh, our frontage is all on Route 4, and Coffin Lane is just a means to access the, you know, the back portion of the development. Uh, with this new portion of the proposed development here, uh, we're trying to impact uh, as little wetland as possible and still utilize uh, all of the, uh, the usable upland on the area. Um, so what's proposed on for this portion is uh, a, larger, a larger development that's down off of the Coffin Coffin Lane here uh, that will have uh, the two pre-engineered structures uh, for internal, um, you know, covered um, RV and, and trailer storage. 
Uh, it is proposed currently that uh, the smaller uh, the smaller building here uh, will have an open open front or be a canopy type structure, not fully enclosed. Uh, but in speaking with uh, Chief Plant, uh, he said that it would probably make the most sense to go ahead and, and get the separation of these buildings as if they were going to be completely enclosed and used as storage buildings just to have that option in the future. And we decided to, to go with that idea and, and push that out. So we have a little bit a little bit more room around this building now to just allow for that in the future. Um, we tried to take advantage as much as possible of, uh, of the natural buffering we have here uh, to the stream. Uh, there is the 75 foot uh, setback that we need to keep here for that stream protection district. Uh, so we've kept that uh, kept that undeveloped, uh, and at the same time we've uh, utilized a portion of of the uh, you know, kind of the extra woodland we have here. Uh, it's still great great condition and, and available for use for treatment, uh, and we've swelled uh, a lot of the what a lot of the runoff coming from from our new impervious area here where the parking is into these two uh, larger level spreaders. They'll then be treated by that uh, by that buffer going down going down to the waterway here. Um, on the other side here, we're, we, we're going to have a gravel uh, outdoor storage uh, area here, and that's going to kind of be the same thing. We're going to be uh, gently bringing all that flow into another level spreader uh, and utilize uh, a fairly long buffer there uh, to get the treatment we need. Um, there is one grass filter here that will be an under drain filter um, that will provide treatment for the remaining, uh, the remaining area here and some of, uh, some of the, the smaller building. Uh, the, the point with this one was we were trying to get kind of the, the least maintenance possible required out here just due to the fact that it is, you know, a remote portion of the site. And uh, we tried to get the majority of the, the runoff treated with, uh, with these level spreaders, the wooded buffers, which do require some maintenance, but not nearly as much as, as these, you know, the structural BMPs. Uh, so that, that's really the, the long and short of it here. This will be going in, as Lee Jay said, for an amendment to that site location application. Everything's been submitted, and now we're just in that in that waiting game with the DEP, uh, mm -hmm. waiting for them to, to get it to the front of their desk and and get the review in. I've I've spoken with them several times about it, and um, they they haven't come up, they haven't uh, given me any anything to work on as far as things they initially saw that needed to be changed. So my hope is it'll this is pretty much the layout you're going to see, uh, and not have any changes from from the state portion of it, uh, but they haven't. I said they haven't gotten their official review, and so I'll, I'll, we're just kind of waiting for that for that portion. Of it. Thanks, Neil. Um, is so we're the um, where the gravel proposed gravel storage parking area is. Um, is there a reason why it says possible well location? Why would we put a well out there? I put I put a well location out there just in case um, in the future they needed to. It is doing any flushing of those of the any RV okay. tanks and, and as far as filling them up for uh, for any reason, okay. uh, it's really that could be taken off the plan. Where I'm not sure how how viable uh, it's it's going to be going forward. I don't know, Tanner, if you want to jump in about how you wanted to utilize any kind of water that was. Yeah, there going. there is no intent to doing that. Uh, we were had multiple things that we were thinking about doing uh, prior to this final. And uh, so that, that was on there for that, but it can be taken off as we don't need it. Yeah, I think if it's not going to be needed or anything, just so that nobody's confused about the intent um, in the future to take that off. We can do that. Yeah, that's something always, if, if something needs to be cited out there, we can come back for, for that as well. So. Yeah, plus if you're flushing RV tanks, I imagine there must be some kind of catch well, no, I wouldn't say flushing I would oh, okay. just be okay. doing, doing like, like fill, cleaning like before they go out and that's and also Perfect. if it's not it's not needed we'll, we can take that thank you okay yep. Mr. LaRue do you have any questions do you want to look at the big plans <laughs> no it seems pretty pretty cut and dry I mean, Mr. Graybill I have no questions at this time all right M Mrs. Fecto, <laughs> no relation. <laughs> no relation. No, I don't have any questions at this time. All right, Mr. Amatucci. I was just wondering if you could just um, enlighten me on this. Exactly where is the area that 
the landscaping waiver is required. Can you show me that? Basically, for, for this whole, uh, the whole development on this back side, everything you see here that's the wetlands, that's all uh, pretty mature standard trees coming through here, and that comes all the way around, uh, you know, then all the way down around Coffin Lane. So there's very little of the development that will be even visible from Coffin Lane, uh, but almost there will be no none of this development will be visible from uh, from Route Four or from uh, any of the any of the public access ways through here. Uh, so that's that's the reason there, there's there wouldn't be much if we did a if we did a landscaping plan there would be almost nothing on it. Uh, we probably wouldn't suggest any plantings out here. Uh, it would only be you know the grass that's required for that grass filter uh, to to function properly, and that's about it. So, so even when the leaves leaves fall and are on the ground there's this is still pretty well screened correct yep because the, the the major portion of it is um it's going to be screened with this with the woodland that's that's in this area here and that's very thick through there i know we if we go out there and walk it you'll <laughs> you'll see but uh that's that's pretty thick through this side and then on the portion that's kind of uh in line with the existing uh, existing storage area that's all. There's no structure there, so you really won't be able to see it. You'd have to really, you have to really look through all the buildings that are that are going into the existing uh, storage area to even try to see this back lot. But I, I don't believe any of it will be visible through, uh, even in even with the leaves down. Thanks, Neil. Is that back lot gonna be lit up? Yes, I do have some intention to white. Uh, around the, the buildings and uh, we'll, we will have cameras out there. All right, but no, like in the gravel part, the gravel storage area in the backpack, is that gonna be lit up too or is that um, like? Uh, yeah, so, some type of lighting, uh, okay. down lighting, uh, yep. maybe a pole in the center. I'm flexible as far as that, but okay. uh, some type of lighting, yeah. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Okay, so we need to vote on these waivers. Um, the one, I mean, do we need to do two separate votes? I guess we do, even yes. though the second one is one of those ones that we do all the time. So um, the first waiver that we need to vote on is the waiver to waive the landscaping plan. Um, I need a motion to grant the waiver for the landscaping plan. I'll make the motion that we uh, that we grant the waiver to the landscaping plan. Okay, moved by Paul and a second. Second. Seconded by Amber. Any further discussion on this? Okay, seeing no further discussion. All in favor of granting the waiver on the landscaping plan, please raise your hand. And that is 5-0, so we will grant that waiver. The second waiver is one of those fun technical ones. Um, they're asking, they're seeking a waiver of the plan scale requirement because it is such a large area on the plan. So um, I'm looking for a motion to grant the waiver for the plan scale requirement. I will make the motion to grant the waiver for plan scale requirement. That's Jerry Graybill's motion. And a second, please. I'll second that. All right, seconded by Paul. Any further discussion on this waiver? Seeing no further discussion, I need a vote for the granting of the waiver of the plan scale. All in favor? And that is 5-0. And last but not least, we need a motion for application completedness. I move that we find the application complete. I'm going to take Mike LaRue <laughs> made the motion. And a second? I'll second that. All right, seconded by Amber Fecto. Any further um, discussion about the application completedness? OK, seeing nobody come forward, I will take a vote on application complete for the site plan expansion of 565 Portland Street, Route 4 Self Storage. All in favor? And that is five zero. Application is complete. Um, how does the board feel about wanting to go out there for a site walk? 
I think we should do it. Mike LaRue wants to go. <laughs> when are we going? The 18th would be would be work. Okay, the 18th, and by then we will um, have had have fallen back an hour, right? Uh, so it's going to be even darker out. So is a four o'clock site walk going to be okay? Does that yeah. work for you, Neil? Make that work. All right, so four o'clock on the 18th, the site walk, and we will meet back at the Coffin, by Coffin Brook, or, or I mean Coffin, Coffin Road, Lane. rather, or by the front area? Where should we meet, Neil? Uh, I think it would probably make the most sense just to line up on Coffin On Coffin, on Coffin Lane. Road? Okay, Coffin, Coffin Lane, Lane, whatever. We can, we can walk right out there, and I'll, I'll, I'll have, uh, I'll probably be easiest to have the surveyors just mark the corner, four corners of the larger building. Okay. And then I think that'll be far enough out to, to get a good idea for it. If you... If you want, uh, if you want me to mark anything else, just uh, you can let Lee J know, and you can you can get that to me, and we'll get out there and mark it. That sounds great. Thanks, Neil. I appreciate it. Great. Thank you, Tanner. I think I can read your name from here. <laughs> yes, thank you. Hearing too. Um, public hearing on the 18th as well, so we'll have two public hearings that day. All right, two public hearings. Let's get it over with. <laughs> Get it done. <laughs> All right, we're going to close new business right, and guys. move on to the second public comment session. Public comment session is open to any residents or um, property owners in the town of Berwick under the purview of the Berwick Planning Board, notwithstanding any open applications or agenda items. Hello, and just state your name and your address for the board, please. My name is Colleen Fleming. I'm a homeowner on Heritage Drive. Um, I live on lot eight. I was listening to the plan um, for the addition of homes onto Heritage. We can't, uh, we can't talk about anything, anything with that plan or the Heritage plan because they are agenda items. Okay. When can I? When can um, I you to? can at the public hearing and we don't have, so, f so for Heritage Lane, the public hearing for that is going to be on the 18th and that's when we can, we can take any comments or questions. So November 18th? November, yeah, our, in two weeks from today. Okay. And the school street application, so that one is still in sketch plan. So, because the, that's the one that that's the one that you want to talk about. So that one we don't even have a public hearing set for yet. Um, so the how, the order of business for that is that they're going to come back. Maybe they might come back on the 18th with their new with their new plan. Um, they might not. They might not come back till December 3rd with their new plan if we can get them onto that agenda. Okay. Um, can I just ask what's the best way? What's the best way for us to get some feelings known, I guess, prior to? Because we hear, like, all the sketching and stuff. Yep. I, I'd like, you know. You can send um, send an email into the planning, um, planning at berwickmain.org. Yeah, email like is yeah. the best yeah, way. Yeah, that's probably the best way. Um, but we can't take any comments about it publicly until okay, public let year. me just ask a question. Yes. So if the planning board proved something back in 2000, mm -hmm. and they're using hypotheticals here. Yeah and they want to add homes to an existing development right where the planning board has already set the restrictions for lot sizes and whatnot um why would this planning board not follow what they had previously laid out um we can uh, anybody can amend a subdivision so something is if something is approved it can be amended i would really hope that the town of borough planning board wouldn't be that disingenuous I'm not sure what you're, okay, I'm not, I'm not sure, okay, yeah, I'll, when you, when you come back for that, for the school street subdivision, absolutely. Okay. Yes. And you said, when, I'm sorry, when is the public thing? We don't know, we don't know, we're not even, we're not even close, they don't even have a plan yet, so when they have a plan that they actually want to create and build. It just sounded to me like. Can you speak into the microphone, just it so just it's. It sounded to me like when we're talking about people in the town, like doing sketches for somebody and that, yep. that you guys have already made a decision and you're not listen, you're not thinking about the people that already live in neighborhoods where something already exists and now you want to throw in a million houses we right so money, so we pay a lot of money to live in neighborhoods I we listen the I, that. okay it's this is not a board decision anybody can buy a parcel of land and they can do with it anything that is in the land use ordinance which is supported, um, the, land, the comprehensive plan supports land use. Or I don't want to get into an argument back and forth, but I'm telling you that anybody can buy a piece of land, and if it is within the, their rights to develop it in the land use ordinance, they can do that. It's not, this is not a board decision. I don't get to make a decision based on what I feel is right. I have to uphold 
what's in this and that's what and that is what we're doing so you you can, you can follow the, the planning board decisions that were already made related to that development the absolutely other, the other question I have sure is 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 the planning board like how are we accounting for all the new houses that are coming in at Berwick in terms of um, increased um, uh, like obviously the schools are already busting at the seams. Right. We dodged a huge bullet by yes. not having that huge tax increase. Yes. But what is the town doing to address that issue? So every time a subdivision comes forward, part of the process, and this is all available online. You can read the subdivision regulations, um, and this is this is our bible. So. Anytime anybody is subdividing anything, part of their application process is that they have to get a letter of capacity from the superintendent of schools. I'm not here to judge. I don't know what's going on. I know what's going on in the schools from what I read on Facebook and what I hear from the school board, but I'm not the superintendent. So as a board, that's what we do. We can only get is, the information from no, I, I, the I superintendent. That. Is there any consideration to maybe doing what some of the other towns do when we have developers coming in looking to put in these developments? in charging them an upfront free fee for each lot that they want to develop? They do, yeah, it's called an impact fee and we do have that. And how, I'm, what is the impact fee? Um, they vary, you can go to the cost recovery schedule on, and it's, it's in here too, it's What's at the, the end average? of the subdivision. A thousand dollars a bedroom? Yeah, it's, a, it, it's about a thousand dollars a bedroom. Can we, can we increase that? You can, you can go to the board but of selectmen to talk about just that. Just let you know that's, that's not correct. It is not a thousand dollars a bedroom. No, it's not. So it's a thousand dollars open space and a thousand dollars uh, recreation per th a three bedroom house yeah and that's set by the that's set by the select board it's not a planning uh, it's not a planning board um. well I would think that the two would work together though right well the planning board we actually went to the select board to get out this was uh, a project that I spearheaded to go to the select board to get impact fees enacted because we weren't doing that um, so we just got them done in 2017 we've been collecting them ever since and um, actually I just did a whole a whole study on on all of that but yes it can be but it's it's not the planning board it is the people of Berwick have to go to the select board and say that they want them increased okay how about a moratorium on building the people of Berwick have to go to the select board and the comprehensive plan committee and say that they want that this is not a planning this, board this is a passion project of mine there are four more kids in the school system now than there were in 1989 the the building the building happened in the 70s and the 80s and the mid 2000s. We do not have a building problem right now, and I can sh I'd be happy to show you the charts that support that. I, I happen to also just wanted to comment that cluster housing is ugly. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Before you so, run away. So I I Madam Chair. Yes, sir. Just as because I have not been involved in some of that other stuff, but just as a point of interest. Um, if someone wants a moratorium on development, the state law only allows a moratorium for 180 days till you can fix whatever problem exists under the land use law. And then the select board could put an additional 180 day moratorium in place if they felt they were not done fixing whatever needed to be fixed. But a moratorium cannot be put in place in perpetuity, if you will, um, under state law. It can only be done for 180 days and a potential ex additional 180 days to fix a problem under the land use laws. Let me piggyback that. <laughs> Thank you, Lee yeah. If there's anybody at home, anybody in the audience that wants more information on how many houses get put up a year in Berwick, please email us. If you also want um, to be added, I can also send you over cost recovery. I can explain how it works. Um, we can explain that all to you. I think that you would have a better understanding of it. Um, and that's for anybody in the audience and anyone at home too. We can explain that. Just reach out to us and we'd be happy to talk to you about it and we'd be happy to send you all our data. It's all public knowledge. All right. Any informational items? If you guys so choose, it's been your bylaws. Just a reminder, you guys get the day off on December 16th. <laughs> Perfect. We do? I thought it was January, wasn't it? Or June or July? July and December. July and December? Right. I think. I think, well, I mean, I'll leave it up to the rest of the board if they choose. I have no problem working. We have a backlog of things going on, and I have no problem with it. But I also... Um, 
I'm happy to oblige my board. So. Yeah. I'm, I'm around if we're busy and we yeah, you'll probably have the edge pretty soon yeah, yeah. Yep. the other thing uh tammy bellman starts monday she's our new assistant planner so feel free to stop in next week and say hi all right she's she comes with many years of uh, municipal experience and has worked with lee J before so so she's a lucky gal she's uh, a <laughs> <been> an admin <laughs> assistant to select board and planning board so looking forward to her Join the team. Awesome. So now I'm just looking for a movement to adjourn, unless Jenny has anything. I'm going to actually say something, okay. if that's okay. <laughs> um, I just want to let you know, um, let's go back to violation talk. I talk about it every yes. meeting. Um, I just want to let you know that if you feel like maybe we're not working as quickly as you want us to on certain violations, we are. Um, so the courts just opened, Court Rule 80K. We are taking two properties here in Berwick to court in December. Um, we are moving forward, but... Court dates are going to be scarce because every town's trying to get them right now, and they only do them like one or two Thursdays a month. Um, so just be patient. We are working on it, and we are we are keeping up with it. So I just want to put that on record. Perfect. I was going through the complaints and violations spreadsheet today, and it's, it's it is amazing how much work Jen has done. So prop props to you. Thank you, James. <laughs> So we are. We're working hard. There's a lot that we need to figure out and a, a lot going forward. It takes a long time to investigate some of these. Watch a property for, you know, a couple of weeks to figure out what exactly is going on there. Some people are really upfront with you and some people aren't. So we have two that are going. They're the most um, crucial to go. And then we'll just hit it from there. So awesome. Thank you. Thank you for your hard work. So now I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. I'll move to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can I have a second on that? I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. Jesus. <laughs>